Hello and welcome. My name is Anastasia Zatula. For those of you who don't know me, I'm a Reiki master, NLP master, and I love to work and mentor on feminine energy. Now, today is very unusual video that I'm recording. Unusual it is because I'm not going to be teaching something uh, honorable or something um, admiring. Today I'm going to tell you what are the three not so good and unusual habits that I started doing and my life changed for the best. Now, as all of you, I am obviously developing and we have been developing for some years and we all should be developing. We all are developing regardless whether we realize it or not, but I've been doing it consciously. And um, these three habits, uh, maybe there are more, but uh, these three um, st really stood up for me when I was preparing for this, um, for this video. So these three habits, you would say that they are not as, um, as, not as good as, uh, as maybe some other habits that I, for example, um, as you know, um, I run every day, I meditate, I work with my energy, I don't drink, I mean, all these are good habits. But these three habits are not good <laughs> in our society they wouldn't be considered good and maybe in this video i will inspire you to accept yourself and to see how not so good habits can actually um, bring changes and positivity into your life so let's start I mean, the, the video is unusual because usually people are talking about how they wake up at 5 a.m., go to the gym and this and this, but, uh, but this video is uh, a little different. So the first habit that I started doing, I became selfish <laughs> and you would say, my God, this is terrible. Well, it is not as terrible because I was a little too unselfish. You see, I am um, I'm the eldest child in my family. Plus, I'm a millennial, like uh, a lot of you probably are. Plus, I'm very empathetic because I have a lot of water energy. So I was too unselfish. I would always prioritize the, um, the needs and feelings of others above my own all the time. It was like, uh, like a normal thing. And I, and I think I became, um, I, at one point, I preferred to, be, um, to stay away from people, to stay away even from men because I felt like I'm melting in them instead of melting in my own needs and my own desires so uh, being selfish uh, i think truly uplifted my life truly truly if i would choose again uh, out of the three habits probably being selfish would become my top uh, top habit even if i would have to choose just one habit just just something uh, uh, one thing different in my life to change my life I would not choose to study energy or study NLP, even though I love them so much. I would choose to be selfish. Now, let's talk about the difference between selfish and self-centered. So I'm not selfish by using people. So a selfish person is using others for the benefit of themselves. Self-centered person is actually a, fo a person that is focused on themselves. So a person that is focused on her needs and her emotions and doesn't um doesn't think about so to say other feelings and emotions and that's what i became i didn't become <sighs> selfish selfish i became self-centered now but a lot of people in my surrounding would say that i became selfish now uh, i grew up in such a society where you are supposed to put the priorities of others ahead of you and it was welcomed now, if you are not, then you are not a good team player, a good person in the society. So it took me some time to understand that nobody wants my, um, my sacrifices, uh, nobody wants to, to take advantage of me, that it's all inside of my head and it's just a pattern that needs to be changed. I am grateful to people in my life that showed me how being self-centered actually helped them and how great they feel and how great how fast they move in their career by being um, self-centered like that. Especially, I had two colleagues who were like this, and about one I often speak, I mean, he was just super self-centered. Like, he believed that everything just, um, the world just goes around him. 
and uh, and you know what the world was going around him like nobody could refuse him to help him or to do something for him and he was eager to help others when he had when he had the chance and uh, for many years i was actually very bothered by him because because i could never allow myself like this and i couldn't understand how he being so selfish as i saw at that moment um could prosper in life like this and could um, and could have whatever he wants in life so i'm really grateful to him and every day <laughs> he probably doesn't know but i am very grateful to him for showing me that there was a reason why he was in my life he was not the only one I obviously i work in finance in new york so I mean, <laughs> there are a lot of people like this. All those uh, finance bro um, uh, style, yeah, it does exist really. Um, so it uh, it really it really uplifted my life, and I encourage you if you are very empathetic, if you melt in others, if you if you choose the desires of others above yours, change it, change it right now, and you will see how they will also change. Remember, we're by ourselves in this life, and the people are just phantoms, and they're showing us. So, for example, if I'm betraying myself, if I'm choosing somebody else over me, that person will also step all over me, will choose themselves over me. They're showing me that I'm betraying myself, and this is not good. So do become um, self-centered start thinking about yourself start thinking about how you're feeling you will not hurt other people you will not trust me i checked it already so many times and at first i was like very um very kind of slowly to embrace this change so for example if somebody will tell me hey you want to go to lunch and uh, i didn't feel like going to lunch so but um can i have a rain check you know let's do it another time i really don't feel i would give like a like a list of, exp <laughs> uh, of reasons not to go to lunch um, and uh, little by little I became like really bold and I was basically just telling a person in the face how how I feel what and to my to my surprise nobody ever said Anastasia you became so selfish not once everybody just embraced me as I am and uh, and they were they were choosing they started to choose me um, above um, not above themselves but uh, but they started choosing me so you see it doesn't work like this it's not either me or them it's uh, it always works out uh, for the benefit of others so for example if you tell me anastasia um let's have lunch um and i said okay and i will offer you to go eat seafood somewhere and you didn't want to eat seafood but i'm sure about my my desires and wishes and then and then suddenly you also want to eat seafood so it always works out for the best it's not like you you will take advantage of others uh, so that was the first habit, especially it helped me with men. Men, especially masculine men, they are very self-centered and they are selfish. Because remember, masculine energy has to get energy from somewhere. They could not uh, generate it inside of them. So they would push me and push me to see how much I can give. And I always felt bad to refuse or not to give or, um, or to stand for myself. And um, and that was my mistake because men love women that have standards there's nothing wrong with that doesn't mean that i was um that i was 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 man all the time no but sometimes i would just push them away just not to be in these situations and that was wrong i could have just uh, stood for myself and it was uh, it was easy like that um so the same it was uh, i did it with money with men with my friends even with my family that was the first one the second one i started to question the standards of the society and i went against them this is also very interesting for me um, i always since i was born again i was born in a traditional kind of law-abiding family and uh, basically my future was uh, pre-written for me so i was supposed to go to university graduate from university um, get a job, get married, uh, have a career, have kids and, and like this and have a house or something, buy a house and um, and I was going like this, I graduated from high school with straight A's and I got into university for free but it seems like not only, it, yeah it gave me some kind of accomplishment but it didn't give me what I wanted, it, it was not, there was no satis certain satisfaction or happiness then I, um, I had my, my company, then I thought maybe I'm wrong, maybe I should actually do like everybody does, maybe I should go and uh, work for a corporation, and I did. And I worked in the corporate world for some time. But again, it did not bring me 
the happiness that I want and I understand that it's not for everybody. I start questioning everything. I start questioning whether working for a corporation is really a good choice, uh, whether saving for retirement is a good choice, or maybe it's better to... Whether I start questioning whether uh, having a degree, as you know, I have a master's in international business. But right now I'm thinking, would I do it again if I had a choice or would I buy a house instead of spending so much money on, on a degree that I pretty much never used? Um, on, uh, should I take a mortgage or should I rent? Like I start questioning everything. Now, I also start questioning whether I should stay in one place or should I, or should I travel around. Like I, um, I start questioning not only um, pre my predetermined future, but I start questioning etiquette, um, education, um, the values that we're giving, or like everything. I'm not sure. At one point, it just, it just, there was some switch in me. I already started working with energy, and I think this boost of energy uh, made me question a lot of things in my life. Like I really start to uh, start thinking, who decided, um, who decided that I should be married and having two kids, or who decided that I should be work in a corporation, who decided that I should uh, contribute to my 401 uh, and well, I was and I'm very happy that I did, but still, I mean, who decides that? So, um, uh, that kind of, uh, me questioning all the standards lead to, to different actions that I took, to actions that probably will not predetermine my future, like I start deciding what I'm going to do in my future. and. Um, um, so, uh, I especially start the question when I start studying Tantra. So Tantra, as you know, is, um, is the study about the connection of feminine and masculine, of man and woman, of uh, sharing love. In Tantra, you're basically connected to everybody and you are in love with everybody. And I start questioning, if this is so, then why, why I am so divided from everything, why there is uh, a different kind of um, levels of people different so I started questioning um, a lot and I start changing now um, for example uh, who like since I was little since I grew up my mom was always working so since I was uh, since I was a child my parents engraved in me that I should have a career that I should never depend on a man this should not that I should never expect nothing from a man and this was, I thought, my strength. I was like always so independent and proud. And I started questioning that too. I'm like, I don't understand. Why couldn't I depend on men? Why couldn't men help me? It's just, uh, why couldn't they support me? I mean, if I give them what they want, it's only normal that they should give me something. And, uh, and my life started changing with these new beliefs. Now, um, also, the, I started thinking, uh, I wrote here, <laughs> Uh, it's not bad to do anything you want. It's not bad to be vain. It's not. Uh, it's not bad to be lazy. It's not. Uh, so I start questioning everything. If somebody would tell me, um, you're not doing nothing. You're just laying on the couch all all day. This is bad. And I start questioning. Why is it bad? Why? Um, I remember when I was uh, a student. Um, um, we had the literature class, and uh, our teacher said that uh, most of the um, of the famous. Um, um, famous novels, famous poems were written by them, by our poets and authors when they were lazy, when they had nothing to do. So why is it laying on the couch and being lazy is bad? I mean, who knows? Maybe I will write something or maybe I will create something out of laziness. Or, for example, eating too much, uh, too much food is bad. I mean, why is it bad? Maybe if I have slow metabolism, it's bad, but if I... If I work out a lot, it's not bad. So I started questioning everything, basically. I, I became like this uh, teenage rebel that I, I was, um, you know, that uh, that I didn't agree with nothing, nothing. If it was a universal kind of uh, truth, a societal truth, I would question it. Everything. I was questioning everything. Um, and to tell you the truth, some of my friends, well, not too many, but couple, and uh, some of my relatives, they. I think they were shocked by me, by me choosing uh, something else, like going from a really good career to <laughs> to what, working with energy, uh, like having um, having a really good future or man that I was dating, I had a couple of really good husband potentials and I just, 
I didn't I chose not to be with them again uh, it is not for everybody to to choose something that's not uh, that's not what society would um, would choose for me uh, so once I start questioning everything I start creating my own values um, and then once I start um, creating my own values I start finding proof for my own values for example, I at one point I decided why do I have so much junk in my in my apartment? Why do I have this and this and this I never use? And you know, it just when I start working with energy, a lot of things start changing because you're getting boost of energy and uh, and you start kind of questioning everything for the most part. So I start uh, cleaning up my space, um, and uh, as I start cleaning up my space, I start getting. Um, um, if you watch the Japanese movie, there was something about cleaning. Uh, Oh my God! What was the name of it? So I started. I started having proof that uh, that actually having less stuff is better for your energy. Plus, my teachers were saying this. Uh, so I started really eliminating a lot of stuff um, that was around my apartment at that time that was in my life. Like I really start uh, start removing and getting this minimalist kind of <laughs> uh, kind of style. I start doing risky investments, even though um, I was advised to do more. Um, not only advice, but I I, I had um, investment licenses. So obviously, as an investment, uh, as a person who has licenses, you know that you shouldn't be risking um, your money very much. You need to you need to have uh, maybe like fifteen percent in a really risky uh, ventures, and and the rest you should uh, put in EFTs or something like that. And I was doing it, but at one point I decided, why not to risk? Look at some people who bought Bitcoin; they became very wealthy. Um, I start choosing men instead of allowing them to choose me and just then be with whoever chooses me. I mean, that was the craziest thing. Um, and I didn't find it to be wrong. I mean, I was, I was approaching men, I started talking to them. Um, I started to have my own standards and I, and I became proud of them. Like, I really was not afraid to now to voice what I am, what, what I want and what I, um, what I like and what I don't like. And this, um, that became again, um, that really elevated my life. But again, I would never do that if I wouldn't start questioning whether it's right or not. Like for example, um, um, for example, I was always told since I was little, so there is a saying in my culture, the horse that's given as a gift, you don't look in her mouth. Like you just accept the horse for what it is. And the, so, you know, if the horse is healthy and good, you look, they look in, the, in her mouth and if her, all her teeth are there, that means that the horse is perfect. Now, uh, if the horse is given to you as a gift, you're not supposed to check whether uh, the horse is healthy or not. You don't look at her teeth. You basically accept it as, as a gift. And uh, so, uh, since I was little, uh, if I'm getting a gift from somebody, I never question it. I never, I just basically gracefully accept it. And I'm like, oh, thank you, thank you very much. This is what I dream about, about this old horse or something like that. Now, I, again, I started questioning that, like, why I'm supposed to accept something I don't even like? It doesn't make no sense. Why couldn't I say that I don't like it? Or why couldn't I um, uh, express my wishes before somebody would even give me something that I, don't, <laughs> that I don't like? I remember the first time I was invited to a wedding in the United States and, um, um, and uh, they sent the link to the registry. My God, how happy I was. I mean, I didn't have to... Uh, to think about what to give, I just I could just speak, and I think this is amazing tradition. And after that, I started questioning. I mean, why couldn't I tell people what I want um, for my birthdays, especially for my man, um, or for for New Year, for Women's Day, or something, um, or holidays like this? And um, um, and I start saying now, if I'm getting a present and I don't like it, I will mention it. I will, especially if I'm getting it from a man. Um, there is nothing wrong in pointing out uh, that something, I mean, I think it is better to say and like the present that you will get and, and, uh, and wear the present than to get something that you will never use and you will just basically dispose of it. Again, depends. I mean, uh, obviously, if I'm getting something from a stranger, I wouldn't probably question it twice. If I'm getting it from a, from a woman, I also wouldn't. But a man, I would question. I would question, I will say if I don't like something. So this is uh, to my standards. I actually, I like my standards and I'm, or if a man is taking me out somewhere and he's taking me somewhere where I don't want to be, I will tell that also.
I wouldn't be rude about this, but I will, I will voice my, um, my concerns and I will make sure we're going to, to a right place. Um, I also started to take risks. I think once you kind of accept yourself and you understand that not everything is um, as it seems to be, you start taking risks and you are not afraid of them because the world is, is not is not all the same as uh, as you say. Like so, for example, when I was when I was little, I thought that there is a set of rules that everybody follows, and that's just how the life uh, basically basically goes, right? So I go to school, I study there as best I can, then I go to university, I study the best I can, then I'm um, um, I'm getting a job, then I'm getting a boyfriend uh, who becomes my husband, then we have kids like this. I saw that there is a particular. A set of kind of uh, like a pattern that everybody should follow but once I understand that there is no really patterns and I don't have to follow some ridiculous patterns that have nothing to do with me I start being risky I start trying myself in things and I start uh, I mean maybe not as risky as as newer generations but still I'm proud of myself that I allowed myself to be some somebody else all right so this is the second uh, habit I start I started to question and went against the standard of society I mean, I went even deeper than that, but I'm not going to to speak about that on here, as it's, I mean, it's YouTube, it's a public um, public platform. Okay, the third one that I did, I became lazy. All right, since I was little, I mean, I'm surrounded by people of um, of uh, masculine energy. My parents, my brother, my sister, so they're always active, and. I kind of always was active like for example my parents would never let me lay on the couch they wouldn't let me so I have a brother and sister also they wouldn't let any of us on the couch so if you're laying on the couch then you're supposed to read a book or if you are laying on the couch then um, then do some kind of exercises or something so there was always this uh, you need to do something all the time some kind of urgency of doing something you know and it's like uh, it's rather stressful so I allowed myself to be lazy like for example if I have um, obviously I mean uh, I have my responsibilities I have my clients I have my sessions that I do with them my consultations my energy alignment so I'm responsible like that but if I have nothing to do usually on Mondays Mondays um, I don't know it's like just happens like this uh, Mondays are my free day so I wake up and if I have nothing planned to do I, I ask myself Anastasia what do you want to do do you want to lay down like the whole day in bed we can we can do it um, and uh, and if I'm like okay, so let's let's just lay. If my inner child will say, yeah, I want to I want to spend the whole day in bed. Uh, I will do that. Um, what to my surprise, my my body never really chose to stay in bed for the whole day, not once. Even though I allowed myself to stay, oh, yeah, you want to sleep all day? We have no plans. Might as well. I never did. But because I allowed myself. Uh, my inner child was in peace and the, and once my inner child knows that it has the option of doing nothing it's actually it actually starts doing something try it I mean you'll see it's a, it's amazing feeling now sometimes when I'm exhausted like for example if I go on some uh, on some adventure for a couple of days uh, or I spend uh, time with other people this happens too I'm exhausted my energy is um, it's not where it's supposed to be like usually if my energy is like this if I will if I'll communicate with other people for too long my energy drops a little bit it's normal then it goes back because I produce energy inside of me so sometimes when I'm um, for two days too busy or I go somewhere on some kind of um, trip or something then I don't have enough energy and uh, that's what the, the, that's why my body is a little exhausted it wants to basically to lay in the <laughs> and rot in bed um, it is normal I also know this that's why I allow myself after this uh, after kind of like being busy or something just to relax for a little bit um, but I also um, I also know that my body will never be idle for too long I know that so I can allow myself okay let's watch uh, some series today I will watch probably um, one episode maybe two episodes and that's it i mean and then i would want to do something i would either want to want to socialize with somebody or i want to to write something or write another script or, or think about something else so like like there is there's never 
never really um, um, I never stay idle for too long even though I allow myself now um, you will ask me well why this habit changed your life so much I will, I will tell you why because first of all I'm energy of water energy of water is feminine energy so it's preferably it's horizontal now when I'm vertical all the time it exhausts me I can't um, like I could be very active for um, six seven hours but then I need to kind of become at least somewhat horizontal raise my legs um, it doesn't mean that I won't become active again. I will become active. I'm pretty sporty and everything, but but it is it's my natural energy. My natural energy is very feminine, so it needs to be horizontal. Um, why did it change my life to the best? Because since I was little, I always was pushing myself. Okay, it's your day off. You need to do something. Maybe go see somebody, or maybe um, maybe do this, or maybe do laundry, or maybe you know. And it gives this this weird the feeling of anxiety and. Um, um, and unneeded stress. It's like my cortisol level was always high because of this, because I never allow myself to be in peace, even though that's where my strength is. That's how I replenish my energy, in peace and horizontally. So once, so I wouldn't allow myself, unless I'm sleeping, even on my days off, I would sleep and have an alarm for like nine, 10 o'clock. I wouldn't allow myself to sleep longer because I couldn't be wasting a day off on uh, just laying around. So once I allowed myself to to sleep or lay as long as I, as long as I want, uh, my life really took a turn. I was replenishing my energy. I was uh, because I was uh, lazy and was not rushing anywhere. I was able to kind of uh, to think, uh, to have some ideas. Um, um, I started uh, like uh, getting inspired. Um, I started researching more things. I mean, it really, really changed my life for the better. Um, now, do I often, um, do I often <laughs> allow myself to be lazy? As if my body wants, I would be, I would finish <laughs> recording this video and I will go lay down. But you see, because my body knows it can lay down, my body doesn't want to lay down. My body probably will go for a run because it does want to to do something. It wants to be active. So, um, and I already told you once, um, only the best of things happen when, when you allow yourself to be, to be lazy and to be just, and just be. Um, I wrote my book when I was like this. I basically allowed myself uh, to read. I already spoke about this, but I will just mention just for the sake of this, um, you know, of this video. I, I downloaded a few books, um, they were like uh, romances and I really liked them. Usually I don't like them much, but these ones were interesting, they had a plot. And, um, and I was so much into them, I just allowed myself to read them for one week. I didn't sleep, I didn't eat, I didn't leave the house, I was just so much into them. And, um, and at the end of that week, I mean, I, I know why, why it happened to me, because before that I was really exhausted. I really was pushing myself to do something that I didn't even want to do. And at the end of that week, um, basically I told myself like this, I don't care what will happen. I mean, until I finish these books, I'm not, I'm not doing nothing else. And at the end of that week, I, was, I just walked around and I was like, well, maybe I should just write a book myself. <laughs> I mean, I wrote a book. It's, um, it was interesting. It is an interesting book. You can, uh, you can buy it on Amazon. Um, it's, uh, it's like at that point, it was my experience with energy and with relationship. It was very, it's interesting. Even uh, I was reading it a couple of weeks ago. And it was uh, interesting to observe how I was thinking at that moment. But anyways, uh, what I want to say is that I wrote the book in three days. Why? Because I had time to recharge and to be, um, to just be without any kind of stress and anxiety. Um, so that's, um, that's what it is. Now, why, uh, why does habits change my life for the best? I will tell you why. So as I already spoke before, um, we have inner child inside of us, inner parent and inner adult. Our higher self is inner adult. Our physical body is inner child and our mind is inner parent. Now our higher self has a particular goal in life for us and it, it kind of moves us there. Our inner child is uh, our body is experiencing life, can get distracted, right? So for example, um, I need to, to have a particular goal. Um, I brought this example in the video on energy. I think uh, the, first, um, the first part on energy. So um, my ultimate goal is to get to the store and buy fish. Now my, my body, my physical body is in a child. So I'm walking to the store. 
and uh, I saw something beautiful there and I kind of turned. I, um, I saw something else there and I turned. So I'm always I'm getting distracted because I'm experiencing life on my way to that store. Now, my mind is my inner parent. The inner parent needs to make sure that the child stays in line and doesn't hurt himself or doesn't um, unalive himself while, <laughs> while searching for those experiences. But sometimes our inner parent becomes very strict or maybe not strict enough or our inner child becomes too wild or not wild enough or maybe very timid and doesn't explore now um, it is important that our inner child has a presence because if we would not allow so inner child initially likes to explore likes to see something new inner child what makes our life interesting you see i i want you to understand this yes we have a goal but if the inner child is not enjoying it what is the point of that goal? Now, inner parent has to kind of watch over the child, but allow the child to explore. So, all these habits allow my inner child to be, to thrive, and to feel that it's actually um, allowed something. You see, when the, um, when I was little and everybody was like, don't be selfish, you have to take care of your brother and sister, you have to do this, you have to do this. It's like my inner child basically was told, you don't matter. There are other people that matter more. So when I became selfish, I allowed my inner child to know that it is important, that it is actually, um, that it's more important than somebody else. And, the, and once the inner child kind of understand that, that somebody loves him or her, well, in my case, her, um, the inner child starts feeling powerful, wants to explore, wants to try new things, want to want to live the life, and it's important. Another thing, um, when the inner child that is allowed to question the standards, allowed to to have his own standards, I mean, the inner child becoming a little brave and uh, and start exploring, start getting deeper into life, instead of just being like a like a blind horse just going where somebody tells him to do. And the same with being lazy, I mean, leave the ch inner child alone. It wants to sleep, let it sleep, it wants to lay. I mean, no child will want to be lazy. Have you ever seen a child that's lazy? They're lazy usually when they don't have enough energy. Either they don't sleep, if they, like, if they didn't sleep enough, they want to sleep, or they didn't eat, they want to eat, or something, or something bothers them health-wise. That's the only really time when the child is cranky a little bit and uh, maybe is not happy. When the child is um, is uh, happy and uh, kind of left alone, it it likes to explore. It likes to likes to be. So, all these three habits basically allowed my inner child to be not only seen, but uh, allowed my inner child to feel the power inside. So, I showed my inner child that look, you do matter. You do. The inner, inner uh, little uh, girl inside of me. Not only you matter. You can, you can do what you want to do. You can, um, um, as long as you <laughs> stay healthy and alive. You can, um, you can try new things. You can speak to different people. Um, you can only think about yourself and and stuff like that. So, uh, these are my three habits that um, that really turn my life around. And I would recommend you. Except for those uh, amazing habits that you you want to do, learn a new language, start running at 5 a.m. in the morning, start eating only uh, carnivore diet, what is uh, very popular right now. Um, maybe maybe you need to start doing something, something opposite, something that will will make your parent less strict and your child more um more open to something new maybe that would actually benefit you i mean i don't i don't say that some some people are completely wild and they need a stricter child a stricter parent inside but most of us are really um just victims of their societal rules and maybe it is time to kind of to start questioning them to start and um and hopefully I will be an example. I mean, I always was a good girl, always. In school I was straight A's, was taking like all this, um, I was participating in all this academic Olympics and the, what, whatever I wasn't doing. I mean, I was doing everything for the good grades. 
in university, I, I mean, I got in for free on scholarships and I mean, I was also doing my best for what? What is all this for? <laughs> yeah, like I was always a good employee, good, not uh, not amazing employee, but good. You know, the the employee that always does what is told, helps others, and convenient employee. I was always like this. So this it, this doesn't bring happiness. I encourage you to do something, uh, to come up with some kind of habits that would would allow your inner child to understand that it's important. That's not the society is important, but your inner child is more important and you will stand by it. And if you think that you're doing something and it's bad, maybe it is not. Maybe you need to reconsider. Okay, so that's it for it. Really, it was just to motivate you. Again, in my three habits were, uh, uh, I became self-centered. I would say selfish because, um, because that's what the... Um, that's what a lot of people would consider it. So, for example, uh, like if somebody would ask me, can you help me with this? And if I don't want to help, I'll say, no, I'm sorry, I can't. And somebody will say, well, you're selfish. No, I'm not selfish, I'm just self-centered. I have other things to do. Maybe I don't feel like doing it. Or maybe... Um, or maybe I, I don't see a reason for it. Like I remember um, um, when I lived in New York, I had the, this lady, she used to come and clean my apartment. And because I lived by myself, I was working a lot, so I could afford it, and I didn't have time for that. I, I prioritized my social life. Um, so a friend of mine, she was doing um, some repairs in her apartment, she asked me to come and uh, help her with the cleaning. And I told her, no, I wouldn't. At that time, I didn't do it because I had other plans, not because I was selfish. But I told her I wouldn't do it. But I can, I can recommend you the lady. You know, like she had a little company. This this woman was like a few girls. They would go and clean the apartments. I said I could recommend her to you, and she can come and do it. Why should I come and clean in somebody's apartment when I don't do it in my own? It doesn't make no sense. But at that time, I didn't do it from, for the reason of being selfish. At that time, I didn't do it because I had other plans. I was going to Poconos or some like upstate. I'm not sure what I was doing. So um, it is important to be self-centered. Focus on yourself and see how people start focusing on you. It is that easy. The second one is I start questioning the standards uh, of the society. Um, not only start questioning, I start changing them and uh, I start uh, living almost opposite. I mean, as long as you don't harm anybody, what does it matter whether you're going to buy a house and be stuck with the mortgage or you're just renting the house? I mean, what is the difference? Like, uh, <laughs> there is no difference. I mean, if, uh, if you are renting and investing money in, um, um, in a high portfolio, in some risky uh, you probably will have more money at the end than if you would have a house and sell it so again i'm not i'm not putting my opinions on on anybody obviously do what is um, what is comfortable for you some people value to have a house they need it um that i don't think that is uh, that's something for me because i don't want to be stuck with one th with one place i mean i wouldn't mind to have an apartment as long as i don't have to stay there and not uh, and not go nowhere else um, and the, the third one, I, I allowed myself to be lazy. So whenever I felt like I want to be lazy, I'm lazy, and I never feel guilty about this. This is the, the most important. So if you are allow yourself to be lazy and you lay and you like, um, and you tell yourself, "My God, we could have do this, we could have do this," might as well get up and do it because that won't help. You need to to be lazy with like really open mind, like. Yes, that's what I want to do today, and that's what I'm doing. That's it. That's it. Don't bother me. No, um, nothing is more important than for me right now being lazy. Like, allow yourself at least two hours. Allow yourself. Okay, for two hours, I'm not thinking about nothing. I'm not doing nothing. I'm not. Uh, I just allow myself to be, play a game, or watch a couple episodes of some of some show, something like that. I'm not sure what you like to do, but but allow yourself those two hours guilt free. And you will see, maybe you will lay for half an hour, your body will recharge and you will jump up and get some kind of um, inspiration to do something. So and it happens to me all the time. I allow myself, like for example, um, I went into, I went sightseeing yesterday, not yesterday, the day before, and I was like really, really walking a lot and it's really hot in Athens, as you know. So I told myself, I'll come home, I will just lay for three hours. That's it, will not do nothing, not, won't even cook. 
and I came home and I actually um, I took a shower I sit for like maybe 45 minutes and then I felt like I want to go for a run so after all this I went actually for a run you see why because I allow myself to be lazy I allow my inner child to choose you know uh, you want you can lay if you want to you can do something it's up to you and I allow and you know what my inner child is thanks God a good child never um, I mean, if if she would choose to lay, I mean, there's nothing wrong. I've been sightseeing all, all day. So, but still, I know that uh, I already know. I mean, it's been a few years already. I know that my inner child will not uh, will not abuse the freedom that's given. I know that. So um, again, I hope this uh, my this video will inspire you. Please don't be afraid to have habits that are bad. Um, bad according to the societal standards they are not bad honestly um, and allow yourself to question um, your maybe um, the upbringing that you had or again nothing is right or wrong nothing is look like I was um, in my culture the morning colors are black but for example um, on the Middle East the Arabic cultures um, the morning colors are white there is a um, there is a culture an island or something where they celebrate um, people's passing, which was shocking for me. Uh, and like there is a lot of a lot of things that thanks God. Once I start traveling, once I um, once I open myself to different cultures, I start understanding. There's nothing wrong or um, like bad or good. It's all about the perception. So maybe the perception that you were given when you were a child is. It's not exactly to your liking right now. I mean, I don't say that, like, for example, my brother, he, he loves to have a house. I mean, he, this is the first thing he invested, he invests in the house. But he likes the perception that he was given when he was a child. I, I mean, we were given the same, obviously, ideas and perceptions, but I don't see that that, uh, that idea is uh, suitable for me as it is for him. Um, again, doesn't mean that it's wrong or right. It just, um, we have different ultimate goals in life so so don't be afraid to question it don't be afraid to to open yourself um, uh, to something new and um, send it to somebody who is maybe a little <laughs> feeling very unachievable or maybe feeling um, feeling like they need a little inspiration um, maybe this would uh, help them a little bit all right, and um, please do follow, like, and uh, and comment. If you have comments, do please put them in. I have a few comments I have to answer, but I will answer them on a live um, soon. Soon, going, to, <laughs> I'm going to do a live. All right, thank you very, very much for uh, for listening. Let me know what you think about my bad habits, <laughs> and I will talk to you soon again. Bye, everybody. Enjoy your day.